Today for Equipment Corner, we're going to talk about steppers. Now keep in mind that a lot of the steppers that I'm going to talk about, I may not have already covered, and there may be some that I'm not covering in this tutorial, but this is designed for someone that's starting out so they can understand what the universe of steppers are and how to work with the ones that they're most comfortable with. So to start with, we have the A4988. This is the most basic stepper. It'll allow you to do 1 16th of a step. Then we have the DRV8825, which will allow you to do 1 32nd of a step. Then there are others such as the TMC2208, which will allow you to control stepping with current, as well as the TMC 2209. We also have the TMC 2130, which allows you to integrate end stop detection into the stepper. And then we have a more powerful stepper that is the TMC 5160. Now, of these steppers, for a beginner, I would recommend not using this being the a4988 because the complexity of dealing with 1 16th of a step is not very good but the drv8825 definitely is one of the ones i would recommend if you're just starting out if you become more advanced i would recommend investigating these but know what you're in for because there's a lot of information that you're going to have to digest in this case you're going to have to learn how to read data sheets and compute root mean square for your NEMA 17 steppers now in this I'm actually including what's known as a fluke multimeter the reason that I'm showing this is because I want you to understand that there are going to be times when you may have to make adjustments on these steppers being probably the DRV 8825 and a multimeter is one of the most helpful tools that you can work with another thing that you're going to probably need is something to actually strip your wires now the reason that I say that is because for the NEMA 17 steppers, sometimes they do not include a DuPont connector for the four wires to connect to your motherboard, and you may have to splice them. And then finally, there's a ruler. Now, the premise of the ruler is you're going to use millimeters on it because that's what the default measurement is for steppers. And this will be used for calibration, meaning how big of a step you'll be taking. And there are tutorials that I've done on the extruder that explain this in quite um, clear detail. I'll include the links for these tutorials in this video in the description. But the final thing that I want to show you is actually a caliper. The digital caliper allows you to actually measure your calibration, for instance, cubes that most people print. I personally print what's known as a 20 millimeter calibration cube. And the premise behind printing it is to check the X, Y, and Z axes. And the reason behind that is you're gonna multiply the actual 20 millimeter cube by five to compute your actual calibration. So now that we know all of this, I'm just going to start to show you what to do with Marlin and how to work with it to calibrate your printer the best that you can to start with. Okay, first thing that we need to understand with steppers is the actual Marlin firmware. But actually, before I describe or show you the Marlin firmware, I want to show you the RepRap calculator and how it works. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the search bar and type rep wrap space calculator. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna search on that. Now either the first or second link shows you which one you're gonna work with. So in this case, we're gonna go to the Crucia printers for the rep wrap calculator. And I'm gonna show you how this works. Now, right now they're talking about actual filament up here. We're not really concerned with that at the moment. We're more concerned with movement. So in order to calculate what our steps are going to be for our particular stepper, I'm gonna use the DRV8825 as our example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Notepad so that we can keep track of these. And inside Notepad, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first find what the steps are for X and Y. Now, as you can see right here, they have a calculation that they're using for a particular stepper. Now understand that this is a belt driven system. So in this case, they're giving you what's the default belt. Most people use a GT2 when they're building their printer. And most people use a stepper that has 1.8 degree of step. There are other ones I'll show you right here. You can buy other ones, but I recommend starting with the default so it's less confusing being 1.8 degree. The next thing is the driver micro-stepping. Now, 1 16th would be the A4988, but if we're gonna do 1 32nd, we're gonna have to pick this one right here, which will double the value that you have now, these usually remain constant for everybody, being the belt pitch and also the pulley tooth count. But if you do have different pulley tooth counts that you're using, you're gonna have to change these values. So for X and for Y, if they're run on belts, we're gonna use, in this particular case, for the DRV8825, 400. So we're gonna copy that, and then we're gonna say X equals 400, Y equals 400. And then we're gonna say Z equals, and then we're gonna figure out what that value is. So to scroll down here for the Z, this is kind of interesting. We're gonna go with the same NEMA stepper, which is 1.8 degrees of step, and we're going to use a DRV8825, so it's 1 32nd of a step. So most people will use an M8 rod, which will have a 1.25 degree millimeter per rotation, so that's how far it goes up in that particular turn of the pitch. There are other ones in here, such as the M6, the M5, which is even smaller, the 12, and a bunch of others. Now keep that in mind because you need to know what it is. Most people use the M8 because it's the easiest to work with. And so the number that we're shooting for here is actually 5,120. We're going to copy that. And then for the actual extruder, for now, we're going to go with the defaults that exist in the Marlin firmware. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the Marlin website and I'm going to go to the download section. Now, keep in mind of these three builds, this one has the ability to do stepping out of the gate, meaning that you're not gonna have to enable your steppers. And then this one is usually used for either 8-bit processors, or only 8-bit processors, pardon me. And this one's good for 8-bit and 32-bit. This one over here is only for 8-bit as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna download the nightly 
bug fix, which is over here, which is basically any fixes that they're trying to do for this will be here in the nightly. Now keep in mind that over here, if you see something that you don't think is right or doesn't work, there's a good resource and that's the reporting issues page. If you click on this, it'll take you to the GitHub for Marlin firmware where you can report an issue or search on one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a search on the EMC 2209 to see if there are any open issues and hit enter. Now, as you can see, there's several issues that currently exist that they're talking about. And you can read each one by clicking on the link within it. Now, keep in mind, if you also have a question that you don't think I can answer, which could be a lot of them, you can always go here and open an issue and ask a question. And most of the time, they'll have no problem answering it or directing you to where you can find more information. And there's also something called RepRap Wiki, where you can search or you can go to a RepRap forum to look up information that other people are talking about. So keep those resources in mind when you're having an issue that you need to resolve. But what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Marlin right now and we're going to download the nightly build. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go over to my downloads folder and I'm going to right click on the Marlin firmware and extract all. So I'm going to click on extract and while this is going on, I want to put out a thank you to the following four people that uh, decided to tip me on PayPal. It's greatly appreciated. That would be Stacy, Tom, Tom, and Mustafa. And if I mispronounce your names, I'm sorry, but I'm only gonna pronounce your first name when I'm actually thanking people for your privacy. So the other thing that I do need to tell you is that I purchased all the equipment in this video with my own money and no one's paying me or sponsoring me to do this tutorial, but I will be placing Amazon affiliate links in the description for your convenience. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually open up VS Code, and this is going to be the way that you're actually gonna edit your file. So what we're gonna search on in this file, just so that you understand what's occurring, is in the configuration file. If you've watched any of my other tutorials, I do talk about going to the source folder, then the boards, then boards.h to pick your particular hardware. In this one, I'm gonna be skipping it because we're not gonna be loading stuff, but I will show you some of the things you have to keep in mind for your steppers. First being, in this particular firmware, you have to do a search, and we're gonna do a search on A4988. If your stepper is not moving, what you need to do is remove the comments to enable it by just basically backspacing to take out the comments. This will allow your stepper to move. So you're probably most often going to do X, Y, Z, and you're probably going to do E0 if you're starting out. The next thing that you want to look for and modify would be your default underscore axis. And let's see what that finds. If I spell correctly, that is. So let me fix my spelling here. So what we're looking for is this particular line in the Marlin code. And what they do is they default it to what they think is most often used. So for this basics tutorial, I'm just trying to show you what the thought process is of how you set this up. So for default axis steps per unit, what you're gonna do is for the X that we found earlier with the RepRap calculator, it's gonna be 400 for your X for a 32 step DRV 8825. 
it's going to be 400 for the same stepper and then your z axis is going to be let's see i believe it's 5120 but i have to check so it is so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to go back and i'm going to replace that value now keep in mind I've done a tutorial on how to do your extruder, which applies to all of these. It's very similar. So in the future, I may do a tutorial on how to do a calibration cube and calibrate your axes, as well as how to set up your surface for printing. But it's a very broad subject, so I'm still thinking about how to do it and present it. So keep that in mind. If you haven't seen the tutorial come out yet, it's probably because I'm thinking about it. So now that we have those set, what you're probably going to do is you'll ignore all this stuff. This is more for advanced users at the moment, so I don't want to talk about it. And I don't also want to talk about how to do additional steppers. I have other tutorials in my playlist that you can check for those. But after you're done configuring your particular board you're going to also configure your default environment so the mega 2560 is one chipset that i talked about earlier being the ramps 1.4 or 1.6 but in order to compile what you're going to do is either hit the build button or depending upon your hardware you can do the build button with upload so it'll actually build your code and upload but seeing how we haven't configured a board I'm gonna skip that for now so if you like my tutorial please press the like button and subscribe and thank you for your time